Okay, let's now evaluate monetary policy and say whether really it's any good or not. There are benefits, there are problems, and really overall whether monetary policy is going to be effective or not depends on several points. So this is essentially a big essay plan for you without all the theory that we learned in the previous video and the diagrams. So, the benefits of monetary policy, well first of all, it affects in the aggregate demand equation consumption, investment, and net exports. It's got a massive effect on all of these things. So that's great. It's got various avenues in which growth can actually increase. At the same time, if there is a positive multiplier in the economy, you can expect further gains in aggregate demand too. Further increases in growth, further reductions in unemployment than you initially thought. There are dual impacts on AD and AS, as we said in the previous video. Yes, for aggregate demand from here, but also an increase in investment, increase in the quantity and quality of capital. So therefore, long run, aggregate supply increases, the productive capacity of the economy increases, which is good. But there are some issues with monetary policy too. It can lead to demand pull inflation. So when aggregate demand increases, there is demand pull inflationary pressure. More worryingly, if let's say aggregate demand is to be boosted by an increase in the money supply, let's say that's the monetary policy, well, if that's not controlled, that can lead to rampant inflation, uncontrollable inflation, rampant inflation, which is not good. So there is a big risk of demand pull inflation. There is a time lag involved with monetary policy, uh, especially with interest rates. When interest rates change, it needs to go through what's known as the transmission mechanism, which you don't really need to know in detail for, at AS level. But there is a whole series of uh, channels that interest rates need to feed down before they actually get into the macroeconomy fully. And economists believe that the length of time before interest rates feed through fully into the macroeconomy is 18 months because of the, the size of the transmission mechanism and the time it takes to feed through these different avenues I've just talked about. So there is a time lag involved with monetary policy, which is why central bankers and those that are in charge of setting interest rates tend to look forward um, because interest rates are really going to only have the full effect after 18 months. At the same time, Reactions by consumers and firms may not be as expected. So just because you reduce interest rates, it doesn't mean people are going to spend. You can't force people to spend money. People might react differently. People might be worried about their job prospects. People might not actually understand what a reduction in interest rates mean. People might not respond as you would expect for a whole host of reasons which can negate the impact. And uh, we never would have said this really before the 2008 massive financial crisis, but interest rates can't fall below zero. Who would have thought that that's a problem? It's turned out to be a huge problem. So interest rates have a limit. You can't keep cutting interest rates. Eventually, you get to a stage where you can't cut anymore. And that's been a huge problem with advanced economies in the West and in Japan as well, who have seen a limit of interest rates as a policy, and therefore have implemented um, other types of monetary policy, like quantitative easing, increasing the money supply, um, to try and fuel growth from monetary policy. And overall, whether expansionary monetary policy, let's say, actually works in stimulating aggregate demand, in stimulating growth and reducing unemployment, depends on, number one, the key thing, the initial level of economic activity. If the initial level of economic activity is close to the full employment level of output, then an increase in aggregate demand won't necessarily increase growth. It won't necessarily reduce unemployment, because the economy is already very close to utilising all of its factors of production. Therefore, it can't produce any more. So all we're going to see, if the initial level of economic activity is very close to full employment, all we're going to see is a big increase in inflation because of the pressure on these factors of production. So that's an important factor to consider. A good diagram is needed here to explain that in an exam. The also depends on the level of confidence. Wow, what a point this is. This is massive. Huge, huge point. Anytime you talk about interest rates and their effect, you bring in confidence because it's massive. In the peak of the 2008-2010 recession, the level of consumer confidence and business confidence was so low, so down low, that even though interest rates fell from about 5.5% to 0.5%, there was no, pretty much no impact on consumption at all. People just didn't want to borrow. They were so worried about their job prospects. They were so worried about the state of the economy, and businesses were so worried about future demand and revenue and profit, that they just didn't want to borrow money at all regardless of how much interest rates fell. So in that sense, the level of confidence is fundamental. We can't just say when interest rates fall, consumers will borrow. It's heavily dependent on, dependent on confidence. Um, which is why 
Interest rates had pretty much no effect in 2008, in the 2008 recession, which is why we saw a big new policy introduced, quantitative easing, an increase in the money supply. Because interest rates lost their effectiveness, the central banks needed to find a different method of trying to increase aggregate demand, knowing that consumers just didn't have any confidence, and businesses had no confidence. So number two is a huge point. Anytime we talk about interest rates, talk about yes, number one, but also number two, confidence is key. The size of the multiplier, the bigger the multiplier, the less interest rates need to be cut for there to be a large increase in growth and a large reduction in unemployment. Depends on the level of the change. The bigger the change, of course, the bigger the end effect will be on accurate demand. Um, consumers will, will see a large fall in the cost of borrowing and therefore are going to be more incentivized to borrow money as it's cheaper and less incentivized to save, therefore they're going to borrow and spend. And also depends on whether expansionary monetary policy might be offset by other factors, maybe offset by contractionary fiscal policy, in which case that might reduce aggregate demand and reduce the gains that we might have seen otherwise from expansionary policy. Or maybe some other factors might have reduced um, the effect of expansionary policy too, something else that might have reduced aggregate demand. So bear all that in mind, that's a perfect essay plan for you now to tackle monetary policy in an exam. Hope that helps. See you next time. Thank you very much.